Hey, this is Flo and in this video I'm showing you how to install, set up and use SwiftLint to automatically apply linting to your Xcode project. The way we set it up will be an automatic lint run every time that you build the project. You can also run SwiftLint from the console if you want, run it for example in your CI CD pipeline, but I will just show you how to run it every time that you build your Xcode project. So first of all, this here is the GitHub page of SwiftLint and there are a couple of ways to install it and my favorite way is just using homebrew so just say brew install swiftlint i already installed it so i won't run the command now but then it will just get installed for you okay then we can close the terminal go back to the browser and the most important part the most important part about swiftlint is that you need a configuration file so SwiftLint supports so many different rules. I think um, this repository also has a section with all of the rules that you can read through. And I think there is also a documentation website. But what I like to do is go, for example, to the Airbnb Swift guidelines. There is a GitHub repository for that. And they also have a SwiftLint file. So here, the SwiftLint.yaml file. So you can either look into this configuration here and just download it and copy it or what you can do is read through their actual style guidelines, look at all of the different um, rules, they also have examples for all of them. But note that Airbnb in this case uses SwiftLint and Swift Format. So these are two different tools. So you will have to be on the lookout for the SwiftLint tag here. Okay. For this video, we will take a sample configuration that I found on GitHub. So we're just gonna download the zip here, unpack it. And now that we've downloaded it, we can go into our Xcode project in Finder. So I just created a SwiftLint intro project here. Just paste the .swiftlint.yaml file. The naming is very important here. And you can, for example, open this with Visual Studio Code or any other text editor. So these are all of the rules here. Let's see, for example, force casting is allowed because there's only a warning and not an error, error thrown. That's something we could try out. Okay, before we can use this file, we need to change the included paths. So here it just has a bunch of yeah, sample directories. In our case, the project is just called SwiftLint Intro. You should obviously replace this with your project name, which is which is the folder name where all of the files that you want to lint are inside of. You can also specify paths that are excluded. For example, if you're using CocoaPods, it's not really important for this example though. And have a look back into the SwiftLint setup. So um, if we scroll up again a bit, there's this little, um, yeah, section here that we can just select or just hit the copy button over here. Now let's go back into Xcode, click on your project, go into build phases, click on the plus and say new run script phase, and expand it here. And then we can just paste in what we just copied from GitHub, hit save. And now every time that we build the project, this SwiftLint will run. Okay, now that we added the run script phase, let's try out SwiftLint. Let w equals zero, let's build this. All right, and there we can already see a couple of SwiftLint warnings. So trailing white space violation, lines should not have trailing white space because you know, there's an indentation here that's not needed. And then it always says, the rule name so you can look it up in the docs if you need to. That's already it. I think SwiftLint can help you greatly with uh, writing more readable and more maintainable code, especially if you're working in a team. If you enjoyed the video and want to learn more about iOS development, then make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.